Well, hello, this is Health in Focus on location at Corn House in Leicester. And I have the pleasure of having somebody that you will all know. In fact, if you don't know her, you probably have been in hibernation somewhere in Outer Mongolia. But for those of you, especially the women out there, but also more the men, have you heard of somebody called Rosemary Conley? Now, if you haven't, and I'm sure there are not very many of you out there who haven't, we'll have the pleasure of having her here for a whole hour and we're going to be talking to the lovely lady herself and she's going to be telling us a little bit about herself and about what she does. So welcome to you, Rosie. It's so nice to be with you. Thank you so much for the opportunity to come see you here in this absolutely wonderful place. Just driving up to Corn House was an experience in itself. I felt I was leaving London and all the hustle and bustle behind and it must be just absolutely amazing working here. It is, and everybody who comes and visits us feels exactly the same. And uh, most people live and work in pretty boring offices and to come and sort of be around about 147 acres of parkland. We've got a, a lake and we've got swans and we've got trees and we've got cows out there. It's absolutely delightful. So it is a pleasure to work here. It's basically the the home of Rosemary Conley Diet and Fitness Clubs Training Centre. Um, we run five companies from here. We have a TV studio. Uh, we have an internet TV channel called rosemaryconley.tv. Uh, we have Cornhouse Publishing, which publishes my magazine, which comes out um, nine times a year. And uh, we run oh, various other things. We, you know, we've got online slimming club and so on. But all our franchisees who run Rosemary Conley Diet and Fitness Clubs get trained here. And it's an absolute hub of activity. Nobody lives here. I don't live here. Um, and it is just a wonderful place to be. Everybody loves coming here. It really, really is a pleasure. And it's a pleasure to meet you as well. Now, I know that you're a humble person. But I would have to say that you must be aware that you're a bit of a legend now. <laughs> I've been around a very long time. That's the trouble. <laughs> um, I've been in the business for some 38 years. And in, so back in the very early 90s, any book that I wrote just went straight to the number one slot. It stayed around in the bestseller list. And the press were just after anything that I could write. My DVDs were in the charts continually. And, uh, and then, of course, we launched the club. So sort of my activities sort of diversified somewhat then. But I've been around a long time. I've been helping people to lose weight. And it all started with the Slimming Club with a few of my neighbours in my kitchen. Um, in Leicestershire, in Thurnby in Leicestershire, back in 1971. Mm. And uh, they lost weight, and then I gave up my job as a secretary, went to the local village hall and opened classes for the general public. And that's really where it all began. And the rest, as they say, is history. The rest is history. And it's history that's actually present, past and future. Because, I mean, you know, you've got lots of energy. You don't intend to retire in the near future, I don't think. I certainly don't. I don't intend to retire at all. Amen to you that. <laughs> I absolutely love what I do. Mm. What I do is an absolute privilege because I help people to be healthier. And I help people to find themselves, feel better about themselves and to live healthier and hopefully longer lives. And that it also transcends down future generations. And it's quite weird now when people come to me and they'll say, oh, my mum's got your hip and thigh doll. I used to work out to your DVDs when I was three. Mm -hmm. you know, and you realize that it is this sort of generational thing. And um, it's, it's quite weird because from my point of view, it's just been a continual track of activity. But it's um, been enormous fun. Yeah, yes, and enormous benefit to so many people, including myself. I mean, I started out, this, this is your fourth book, isn't it? The fourth book you, you wrote, but yep. one of your bestsellers, and um, The Complete Hip and Thigh Diet. And I had this book in the 80s. I remember my friend and I used to work out and go through the recipes in this book and do the exercises and, and you know, amazing stuff. You've, you've had some more recent, obviously, more recent books than that, and we'll talk about that in a little while. But I'd just like to ask you, what started you on the journey? You know, what was it that decided that this was something that you had a passion for and something that you wanted to do for the rest of your life? Well, when I first started my first living class, I just lost some weight myself. I, I, I'd been always quite skinny as a child. I wasn't a very healthy child. Um, they'd, my parents didn't expect me to live beyond 10 years old. I had a chronic asthma condition. I was very, very frail. And as a result of that, 
I really was, you know, I was really very fragile. Um, when I did get into puberty and then suddenly I began to blossom a little bit and I met um, my first boyfriend and my first husband and I put some weight on and ended up weighing actually 10 stone 4, which I'm, I'm only um, 5 foot 2 tall. I weigh 8 stone now. Wow. And at 2 stone 4, I really was big. I know that doesn't sound massive to lots of people, but for me, it was. I'm somebody who takes size 3 shoes. Now, I really am quite tiny. And uh, so as a result of that, I so hated being overweight. So I lost the weight. And then I thought, right, I went to another slimming class. And when I went to the slimming class, it was just a weigh-in and talking about food. And I thought, you know, I'd really love to run classes, but I want to incorporate more than just a weigh-in. So I incorporated good grooming. And the good grooming was basically making the most of yourself mm. so that as you lost weight, you actually learned about how to do your hair, how to put makeup on, um, how to sit, um, how to do your nails, all of those things, and how to dress to flatter yourself. And it was really, really great fun. I'd been on a course, and I took what I'd learned from that and delivered it within my classes. Well, in that very first class in the village hall, I put up 30 posters, and 29 people came. Now, in those days, I charged a pound membership, and 25 pence was the class fee. And we had 29 members on the first night, and I'd never taught in that situation ever before. I was terribly nervous. Mm. But I gave them a diet which I'd worked out, which I, I was on 1,400 calories a day. I felt it was a healthy diet. I'd had it looked at by the doctor who, who approved it. And then I gave my talk about good grooming. And it just grew. Mm. And it was amazing. I opened additional classes. And as I said, I, I, I gave up my, my job as a secretary and suddenly found that this is what people wanted. Mm. They actually enjoyed losing weight, seeing the benefit. The weight loss happened. They took on board the advice of how to make the most of themselves. And this was just really exciting. Mm. So over a period of about eight years, I then opened more classes all over Leicestershire until we got to 1980. And we then had 50 classes running every week. Different people were running those classes for me. And it became, then we started incorporating exercise. So that was great fun. None of us were qualified in those days. But we were, you know, I don't think it ever harmed anybody, to be absolutely honest. Uh, but it was different from the normal sim clubs that were out there. And, uh, and then I was approached in 1981 by IPC magazines who were producing a magazine called Successful Slimming alongside, as an offshoot really, from Woman's Own magazine. Mm -hmm. And as a result of that, they wanted a, a chain of clubs that they could latch on to. And they liked my clubs because they were different and we really cared uh, and delivered a really good good service uh, and anyway so we in, in effect I sold their my classes to them I ran it for them for four and a half years it was the toughest and hardest and most awful time of my life and as a result of that I swore I would never work for anybody ever again mm. because they're a big national company and Obviously, they were concerned about the bottom line. And from my point of view, that wasn't my priority. Um, of course it was for them, and I'd be naive to think that it wasn't. But the thing was that it was just hard, and my marriage failed, uh, and it was just a really hard time of my life. And, uh, and I then met uh, my um, future husband, Mike, uh, and Mike and I were together for about three years. And then when the clubs all closed mm. and uh, our relationship came to an end, I was going to be, um, I was really going to be out of a job. I was going to have to move house. I hadn't got the salary in the car anymore. And then I had a gallstone problem and was taken into hospital and was really very poorly and was told I needed to have a gallstone problem. And uh, then while I was in hospital, that's where I saw an advertisement for a book called Power for Living. And uh, Power for Living was ab being advertised and prom promoted by Lord Tony Pandy, mm. Gerald Williams and Cliff Richard. And if ever there was somebody who needed Power for Living at that moment, it was me. And uh, so I sent for the book and it came through the post on the day that I was due to go back to 
hospital for a, um, a cholecystogram to see how bad my gallstones were. Yeah. And when I read it, this book was just so simply written, I felt as though God was talking to me as an individual. And on that Friday night, I went home and I prayed the prayer that was in it, where I asked Jesus into my life. And I gave my life to the Lord. And from that moment, my life completely, completely changed. And it was an extraordinary experience. Mm. And uh, I often tell my story, my testimony, um, at various events around the, the country, mm. because my life completely turned around from that moment on. It, you know, just listening to what you're saying, for those who've never read the Bible, they may have heard of the story of Job, where Job lost everything, including his health. And he was down to absolutely nothing. It's almost like a modern day Job story that, where you'd lost everything. Your health was at its lowest step. You had this painful, awful condition called cholecystitis and having gallstones. And, and then you read a book that changed your life, dramatically changed your life and you gave your life to Jesus Christ. Now, I'm sure a lot of people do know that you are a Christian, but I don't know if many of them have heard how that actually happened. And a friend of mine, just, just let yesterday, as I was telling her I was going to come and um, interview here, said, powerful living, powerful living, it changed my life as well. I read a testimony. And so you have not only changed people's lives in the natural by giving them such a, a makeover with their bodies, with their physical bodies, and that itself is an amazing thing to be able to do, but also you've also been a witness to people as a woman who loves the Lord Jesus Christ, who's a Christian, and whose life has been changed dramatically through that. Now, how does your faith mix with the work that you do? Well, it works very well mm. because I feel that um, God has sort of put me into this almost controversial industry uh, as being you know, right, I want you to go out there and I want you to teach healthy eating, increased activity, and to try and really produce some good messages rather than uh, some of the get-rich-quick uh, schemes that some companies come up with, which are absolutely dreadful. Uh, and it's, it's so confusing for the con consumer. And I also work in the media, and in the media these days, there's this real sense of, oh, well, you know, I've heard of very talented musicians who have been told, you mustn't say that you're a Christian because you won't sell. You know, that's tragic to me. And I, I absolutely go out there and say I'm a Christian. I say that I'm a Christian in every single one of my books that I've written, and I will not deny that in any way, shape or form. And I'm a very public Christian, and I welcome any opportunity to say it. And people can think what they like, but I've been around a long time and I think people who work with me and our franchisees who, there are 174 of them who work for us, know that when they come to work with us, they are working with a company that operates from a Christian ethic. And I'm really proud of that. And it's, I think it's really important that, you know, sometimes we say, oh, isn't it hard being in business and being a Christian? No. Why should it be hard? It's ridiculous. You know, you pay your bills. You don't wait until after the pay date. You pay it on the date. If somebody pays you twice, you pay them back. Yeah. Um, and if somebody has, makes an error, you correct it. Um, it's black and white. And it doesn't mean to say that you're a pushover because sometimes you might have a member of staff who swings the lead mm. um, and you have to address it and maybe something happens where somebody takes advantage of you. I won't be taken advantage of, we will address it. And so people realize that actually the boundaries are very clear, and, but the positives are so great in being a Christian because we are immensely fair. And I think that's really important. It, it is, and, and one of the things I've noticed, in fact, on the street I live, there is a Rosemary Comley fitness instructor, and I know that because she's got a car, and this car's got Rosemary Comley blazing everywhere. And, and the other day I thought, shall I go and tell her what I'm gonna do in a few days' time? <laughs> but you know, your, your success is, is amazing. It's amazing to, on two levels. As you said, you have the, the code of ethics that stem from the foundation of your Christian faith. Which means, as you said, you don't want to be a walkover because a lot of Christians feel, and a lot of people will say, if you do stand up and you call yourself a Christian, 
you know, as if we Christians are supposed to be carpets for people to walk over. So you found that amazing balance between being a businesswoman, being a fitness, diet, health expert, which is really what you are, and also being a Christian. And how about your personal life? Now, I know you have a daughter, is that right? Yes, I do. And mm. how, how old is she? Um, she's Will she want you to tell me? <laughs> I don't think she might. She's 35 this year. Wow. And uh, she uh, was um, born to my first husband and myself. And is it such an amazing blessing. She's very involved in her own church. Um, and she's just the best daughter in the world. Mm. And so uh, she's a complete joy. And uh, we're very close. And uh, my uh, first husband and I have remained the best of friends. Wow. And, and I'm, well, I did marry Mike. Um, Mike is, is the guy who I broke away from uh, at this crisis point in my life. But when I became a Christian on the Friday, Mike came around to see me on the Sunday. And he was saying that he actually was struggling to live without me and I was really missing him. And that night I felt God say to me that I should marry Mike. And the following Friday I proposed to him. Wow. And we got married four months later. And we've been, next year we'll have been married 25 years, which is amazing. You've got your silver medal almost, yeah. haven't you? <laughs> exactly. And he became a Christian shortly after me. Oh. And uh, through reading Power for Living, mm -hmm. exactly the same. And um, it's, we, we're so blessed. It's been, and, and God has been incredible because about 10 years ago we went through a really tough patch. And in that patch, if we hadn't been Christians, I honestly don't think we'd have made it. But because we were, and I, I, I actually know the lady who's behind this, the Powerful Living book, um, Nancy DeMoss, it's her husband who is the, the real sort of backer of this book. Mm. Um, and they've given, I mean, nearly 100 million of these away all over the world. Um, and we had the privilege of meeting uh, Nancy DeMoss. And uh, she has been such a strength to us. And at this really difficult time, she just said, look, just surround yourself with, with Bible tracts, with... Um, music and just keep you know just keep God around you and hold it together and God sort of protected me and he sent me an army of people who just propped me up at this really tough time in, in our lives and then we we really did bring it all back together and we rebuilt our marriage and that was such an amazing thing and you know you don't fall in love that easily. And it's such a shame when you, people throw that away because you can. And when you can rebuild it and you realise the depth of the love that you have for someone, for each other, and that you look forward to the fact that you're going to be send, spending the rest of your life together in God's presence and, you know, under God's wing, it is just amazing. And our marriage is stronger now as a result of those difficulties that we went through. Uh, and now it's, you know, we're so rock solid um, and it's wonderful because we so truly love each other. It's a joy and we're very fortunate. It, you are indeed, because one of the problems, of course, is that even among the Christian um, community. There's so many marriage breakups, so many divorces, and um, only recently there was a very well-known um, TV evangelist whose wife decided to divorce him after 30 years of marriage. Uh, and you know, it's it's very sad. It's very tragic that that happens. And so it, it's really, really important that as a Christian, as you said, surround yourself with the Word of God. Surround yourself with people who will give you godly counsel. I've, I've only recently got married myself, so I'm sort of listening with all ears for all the tips and how to, how to get my own 25-year silver medal. medal. <laughs> well, my, my husband's a lot older than I am, so, I, you know, but, but uh, yes, I'm praying for that. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Is your husband involved in the business at all? Very much so. He's uh, the co-owner. Um, and you know, director, and when we have two other directors work with us, um, we are a very happy business, and it works brilliantly together. We really enjoy working together, and uh, Mike is a, a real whiz on the IT front, uh, thankfully, because I'm completely um, IT not, and so it's it's very helpful that you know we have different strengths, and the people, the other two directors that we have, um, also have different strengths. And so between us, we have a tremendous balance 
uh, which is, is it works. Mm. It absolutely works. And we surround ourselves, I surround myself with experts. And it's understanding.